Welcome to another Bumpy.net video and today's video will be all about why you shouldn't buy a Subaru WRX STI in the Netherlands. In the last Down on the Street video I spoke about the Subaru WRX STI being too expensive here in the Netherlands. And in this chart you can see that the list price in the Netherlands is so high you can actually buy three of them in the US. This insane price is caused by a 53% CO2 tax and it's also including 8% VAT and this accounts for 61% of the total price of the car. And that ticked me off and I decided to do a bit more thorough investigation on the CO2 tax. I composed a list of cars that would be either roughly comparable in class, engine power, CO2 input and out of inter interest I also added the Tesla Model S P90D and the Toyota Prius to the list. And then I looked up all the prices in the US, the Netherlands, Germany, which are our neighbors, and Norway, where everything else is expensive. Looking at the prices, I immediately spotted that there's a similar pattern for the BMW M3, Ford Mustang 5 liter V8, and a Chevrolet Camaro. All of them are about three times as expensive in the Netherlands as in the US. The German prices are comparable to the US. And also note that the WRX STI, GTR and Camaro are not for sale in Norway. Comparing these cars on power and torque learns us two things. One, the Tesla has insane amounts of torque. And two, you definitely cannot expect a lot of acceleration from a Prius. If we compare the Dutch list price for the power output, we can see a relatively uniform price. The best value here is the Civic Type R and a Mustang 2.3 EcoBoost, around $180 per horsepower. And if we show the same for torque, we can actually see that both outperform the Tesla, even though the Tesla has insane amounts of torque. Another comparison could be that we look at the base price of the car, the price without any taxation on it. This should be comparable with US prices. And what we see here is a shift. The Prius is actually the most expensive, followed by the 86 BRZ, M3 and then the GTR. The Camaro is dirt cheap here. With a base price of only 28K and lots of torque, it surely is a tire shredding winner. But wait, what about power to rate? Isn't that the thing we all care for? Sure. If we look at the weight of the car, we can immediately spot that the Tesla is a heavy weight. So the power to weight also reveals that the Nissan GTR, BMW M3 and the Mustang V8 are clearly winners here. They have an awesome power to weight ratio. By creating a picture power to weight, we actually have to divide the power to weight by the list price to get a price per horse per kilogram of car. And clearly the Civic Type R, Toyota 86 and the Mustang EcoBoost are winners here. But maybe we should look how these prices are actually built up in the Netherlands. I mean, I mentioned that we have CO2 tax. Well, we can see the base price in blue, we can see the VAT in red, and the CO2 tax in yellow. And it's quite clear that the cars most affected by the CO2 tax are the WRX STI, the Mustang V8, the 370Z and the Camaro. The GTR's base price is already high, so a 39% CO2 tax isn't that high compared to the base price. And another interesting fact is that the much higher price for the Tesla Model S P90D in the Netherlands, which is not caused by the 0% CO2 tax, but actually the 21% VAT that we pay on our cars. So 21% on top of the, of the base price is being paid in taxes already. So how does the Dutch government calculate the CO2 tax then? Well, they made brackets out of the, the exhaust gases per kilometer in grams. So between 0 and 79 grams per kilometer, you pay 175 euro base tax. So that's without any of the output of the grams. And then the amount of grams per kilometer times 6 euros. That may not sound like a lot, which it isn't. So if you have a car that uses less than 79 grams per kilometer in CO2 output, you really have a cheap car in CO2 tax. Between 79 and 106 grams per kilometer, you pay 
649 euros base tax and then the amount of grams exceeding 79 grams times 69 euros. And then between 106 and 155 you pay 2512 euro tax, base tax, and then the amount of grams per kilometer exceeding 106 grams times 124 euros. And then between 155 and 174 you pay 8588 euros base tax plus the grams per kilometer exceeding 155 grams times 239 euros. And then anything beyond 174 grams per kilometer pays 13,129 euros base tax. So that's already like 13,000 euros you pay for just buying the car without any additional uh, gases coming out above 174. So then the grams per kilometer exceeding that 174, you have to multiply that with 478 euros. So if we calculate that for the WRX STI, we have an official output of 242 grams CO2 per kilometer, and that will mean it falls into this highest category. So that's 13,129 euros base tax. And then we have to um, subtract 174 grams from the uh, 242 grams times 478 euros which is a total of 45,633 euros in CO2 tax, which is a total of $50,714. So what is the height of CO2 per kilometer for these cars? Well, as you can see, it's not that outrageous, except if you're comparing these values against the price or the Tesla. But apart from that, it's not that bad. So why is there actually such a big price difference if all of them seem to be quite similar in CO2 output. Well, that's because of that bracketed taxation. Some of them fall into lower categories and pay less per kilometer, and some are in the highest category. And it's very visible if you compare the CO2 taxation against the torque. The least taxed is obviously the Tesla without any CO2 output, and then the Toyota Prius, and the third is the Type R. So what are the conclusions we can draw here? Well, first of all, don't buy a Tesla Model S P90D. It's simply too expensive to begin with. It's a heavy weight. It's not worth all the money. Sure, buy a base model, that will do fine. Then, most of my favorite cars are taxed beyond obtainability for me. The WRX STI, 370Z and the GTR are all far beyond reach of my wallet. I simply cannot afford these cars. So what about the PRZ and the 86 twins? Well, I could buy them. But one glance on every graph makes me realize I should actually buy the Ford Mustang EcoBoost or the Honda Civic Type R. And the EcoBoost is the 4 in line 2.3 liter turbocharged shame of the Mustang lineup. Do I want to drive that? Well, surely it's a great car to drive. But I don't want it. Reason tells me that I should buy the Type R instead of the STI. But is reason enough justification?